Okay, here we go. One shot at the uh, answer key here. All right, it says um, graph the following on a number line. This is really just a test of your ability to understand the difference between the words and and or. So that's not totally tough. Just use your common sense. X must be greater than 6 and less than 10. So here's going to be 6. There's going to be 10. You don't have to get too fancy about it. They're less than or greater than. So I'm going to circle that, circle that, and then just shade in between. Okay? open circles unless it's equal to. Here when it says or, I can go to 3 and 1, so here's 1 and here's 3, and it can be greater than or equal to, so a shaded in dot, make that solid, going this way, and then at 1 it's going to be circled going this way, one or the other. It does not have to be true for both. If this was an and, you'd get an empty set, there'd be no possible solutions. All right, for the statement, all rectangles are quadrilaterals with congruent diagonals, rewrite it in conditional form, that is an if-then form, and say whether it's true or false. If the statement is false, give a counterexample, all right? If a figure is a rectangle, I can abbreviate that, then it has congruent diagonals. All right? I'll understand that if you abbreviate it. Um, is that true? If a figure is a rectangle, yes, it does have congruent diagonals. So it is true. Write the converse of the implication. So if a figure, sometimes you have to supply that a little bit, um, has congruent diagonals, then it is a rectangle. And if you remember your stuff from our chapter on that, that is false because it could be an isosceles trapezoid that is like this, and these diagonals be the same. That's your counterexample, so false, and that's counterexample. You could also just say a hexagon. Hexagon has got congruent diagonals and that is not even close to being a rectangle. All right, um, which of the following are valid conclusions based on the given implications? If the animal is a zoid, then it eats cloids. Z means it's got to eat K. So if the animal eats cloids, therefore it is a zoid. That is just swapping that. That's the converse, and that is not valid. Converses are not valid unless it's a biconditional. The animal does not eat cloids, therefore it is not a zoid. Does not eat cloids, therefore it's that's the negation going backwards. That is valid. That is the one that's okay, and that's indirect reasoning. Um, that's converse. I don't know if I ask you to write that down, but that's what that is. Um, the animal is not a zoid. Therefore, it is, does not eat cloids. Nonsense, but also invalid because that's the inverse. So that's not valid. And that's because it's the inverse, and inverses are not valid automatically. All right, here it says rewrite the following definition in biconditional if and only if form. I might not write that on a test, so you need to know biconditional means if and only if. Every trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Um, I would say a figure is a trapezoid if and only if, and that's the abbreviation for that, if and only if it has exactly one pair of parallel sides. Again, I'm abbreviating just to go quickly. That's good. You can write out if and only if if you want, but you can also use the IFF abbreviation. All right. For this one, what is a postulate and why are they necessary? Uh, it's boring to watch me write. Postulates are unproven assumptions. Okay, that's like two points determine one unique line. All right, or 
that a straight line has 180 degrees. There are all sorts of postures. Look some up in the book. They're necessary because we need um, a starting place. And again, I'm going to go quickly. You can look that up in the book. Uh, you don't need to watch me write it all out. Supply the missing steps in the following algebraic proof for any non-negative number x. Okay, so that means it cannot be negative, such that 4x minus 7 squared equals 169. There is one solution, and that must be x equals 5. A lot like the quiz. I think you guys might get this by now. I'm starting with this, and I'm going to begin by taking the square. Oh, that's given given that that is the starting point. You're almost always going to begin with the givens. But now I'm going to immediately take the square root of both sides and I've broken it down so that 4x minus 7 is 13 and negative 13. That's the definition of what a square root is. Definition of square root. Then if I take and add 7 to both sides I'll get 20 or I'll get negative 6. This is the plus property of equality, and that's a postulate. You can look it up. That's one of our things we can't prove, but it's just a given true statement that we can add equal things, in this case 7 to both sides. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 4, so that x equals 5, or x equals, in this case, when I divide by 4, it's going to be negative 6 fourths, or 3 halves. You can simplify that or not. And that's the division property of equality that says I can divide both sides by 4. x is non-negative. That's given because we're told that up here, non-negative. So finally I must conclude that x equals 5 because that's the OR rule. If it's one thing OR the other and I can rule out 1, I must have the other thing be true. Okay, on to another one of these geometric proofs. Sorry this E is a little bit out of whack down there. These are parallel and uh, I think it says L1 and L2 are parallel. Oops, that got left, left off. L3 and L4. I think you can figure that out. Um, prove that angle A and angle E are supplements. All right. You may not need all of these lines provided. You can add extra letters or numbers. I'm going to start off with L1 parallel to L2 and L3 parallel to L4. And that's given. Then I'm going to add, let's see, um, the simplest way to do it, I'm trying to prove that there are supplements. I think I'm going to go co-interior angle. Maybe I'll do that. I'm going to say there's angle B right there. I'm going to say angle A is congruent to angle B, and that's AIA angle theorem. That alternate interior angles. These guys are parallel, and they're cut by this transversal, alternate interior angles. And then I'm going to say angle E is congruent, I'll call that angle um, F, to angle F, and that's because they're vertical angles. There are many ways to do this proof, so if yours is not exactly the same as mine, it's not a, probably a bad thing, but I can check it out if you bring by. Then if I've got F is equal to E, I can say um, angle B is supplementary with angle F and that's co-interior angle theorem and then I can say that angle A is congru oh sorry is supplementary that's what we're trying to prove supplementary to angle um, at E and that's just a substitution. I'm substituting E in for um, F in for E and then B in for A. So B gets replaced with A and F gets replaced with E. And I'm done. All right, on to the last page here. Uh, given these things, translate the above symbols into letters and words. All right, well, this just means here, this means. If, whoops, if P then uh, R, this one means just if S then 
not r, just checking to see if you know what that tilde means of not r. Then we've got therefore, that's the three dots there, therefore if p then not s. And if you work it out, that is actually true, that um, if we know p is true, r is true, that's direct reasoning. If we know r is true, then not not r means not s, and that's indirect reasoning coming back, so that does check out. So there's the answer there. Is the conclusion true? Up, I just did it. It is yes. Um, step number, if that's one and that's two, however you want to do it, number one, uh, direct reasoning, and number two, indirect reasoning. Okay, here's another one along these same lines. We've got the statements. You can just do a little proof here real quick. Start with the fact, not Q, and that's from number four. That's just a given. And then I can go from not Q to not P, and that's from number one and indirect reasoning. Then if it's not P, I can go straight to S, and that's number two, and that's direct reasoning, because again, we're going in the direction that it's given. And then finally, if we've got S, I can go backwards to say not R, and that's what I'm trying to prove right there, and that's number three and indirect reasoning. All right? Finally, explain the similarities and differences between the following. Okay, again, um, you can look these up in the book um, rather than listen to me um, write down things slowly, but basically undefined terms are like postulates. These are things that you just start with. You cannot define an undefined term. You cannot prove a postulate, so they're similar. Then definitions are built up from defined terms just like theorems are built up from postulates. So you can say undefined terms are to um, definition. And then I don't know if you've seen this in like IQ tests as um, postulates are to theorems. Okay, so these have the same relationship as those. All right, good luck.